Hello ladies and gentlemen, Marauder X here back with more Let's Play Shining Force 2. And we have our three heroes, Bowie, Chester, and Sarah, getting ready to face off against the evil gizmos. Alright, so I kind of want to do some fun editing, so I don't know what I'm actually going to put in for uh, these, these enemy appearances at fights. You know, kind of want to make something special on this Let's Play. But uh, let's take a look at the gizmo stats. Uh, HP of 5, attack of 8, defense of 5, agility of 5, movement of 5. That's a lot of fives. So, and there are six of them. So that kind of throws that scheme off. It's a little frustrating. <laughs> you get so many fives and then nothing. All right. So it's time to get tactical. As you can see, Shining Force 2 is a tactics-based RPG grid layout. Uh, each character has uh, a movement range, and then you also have uh, terrain type that can influence movement based off of the, uh, the character's race, class, etc. Uh, one thing also to note is there is a box in the upper section called Land Effect. Like we see it here, Land Effect 15, Land Effect 0. Uh, that is a uh, defense percentage increase. So if you are on a section that gets you land effect 15%, you get 15% bonus to defense. Doesn't seem like a lot, but land effect can be used to your advantage really well. Uh, there are some creatures that do not get land effect bonus, they are flying, but they are also not inhibited by uh, terrain restrictions. So say, for example, Chester uh, does not move well in sand. So, but he gets the defense bonus from sand. So it's kind of a double-edged sword. Alright, so we have our first attack. We kind of bait the uh, the gizmos in so that they can come in and uh, attack us kind of leisurely. We don't want them to, you know, swarm us because they do outnumber us a fair bit. Uh, and as you can see, they did two points of damage to Sarah, but in this game, you can do critical attacks, you can attack multiple times, so you really want to be careful. And, like, Bowie took more damage than Sarah, mostly because he is on a land effect of 0% at the moment, so that doesn't do him any favors. And, of course, the gizmo dodged. That's just peachy. Uh, we are going to take this opportunity to heal Bowie, because you always want to stay on top of healing. It's a little soon for a heal spell, really, but I, I, it gives Sarah 10 XP guaranteed, and you always want to make sure your healer in this game is uh, properly leveled. That That is one thing about this game. Uh, your hero and your healers. Uh, your hero is a major, major liability at times because while they can be your strongest unit, it is entirely possible that if your hero dies in battle, you lose the fight. There is a boss mechanic to this game, where some fights have boss enemies where if you defeat the enemy boss before defeating everyone else, the battle comes to an end. The same thing happens for your team. If your hero dies, in this case, Bowie, you lose the fight automatically and have to restart from your last save. So, Keep an eye out for your hero. You don't want them to die. And Bowie's counterattack to only have the gizmo dodge. This is not turning out to be a uh, a good round for me. This really isn't. Normally I'm doing so much better. But all right, so gizmo down. We've got two down. We're gonna have one more probably come up, but in the meantime, we're going to heal Bowie again. On the upside, the AI will go after Bowie or your healer. They will typically go after uh, the strategically most advantage, uh, advantageous uh, opponent for them, so you can use that to your advantage, and you can also, like any other uh, grid-based tactics game, you can use positioning to your advantage. So... You, you can use that to block characters in, 
uh, flank characters. There, there are there are a lot of options as to what you can do to get by in this game. Alright, I really want Sarah to get a kill shot so that she gets some more XP. Because like I said, I want my people to level up. I'm not going to level up in this fight from, this, from the look of things. Uh, Bowie might get level 2, but that's a... That is a might. That's... Yeah, let's go ahead and, uh... Attack. Yep, Bowie gets level 2. I, I won't get to level 2 with anyone else, because these guys are just not giving nearly enough XP. Like I said, we're going to bait that last gizmo. Take this opportunity to heal Bowie again. Get some, some more XP for Sarah. 13 XP, not bad. And of course we're gonna get attacked. Now that we're level up, we got a little bit of extra defense. So, you know. Sarah, 15. What is everyone's XP? So Sarah, actually Sarah is close to leveling. I'm gonna let Sarah kill it for uh, the extra XP. If I can get, you know, two people to level two in this fight, that's a that's a good day. Uh, one thing I should talk about is turn order. There are several stats that, uh, if you look at on their uh, the main page, uh, it talks about uh, agility. Agility is your stat that determines turn order. So that's why some characters get turns multiple times before another character, because their agility is that much higher. So we defeated all of the other evil gizmos. Let's use this transmutation circle to uh, to pay the toll for a Philosopher's Stone for this little bit. However, it uses a strobe light ability to, uh, to vanish from us. Like, every time it, it disappears, it lights up the screen, so... Except that time, it just kind of phases out into existence. We must hurry to the king. So we know the evil Gizmo is going after the king. We must go rescue the king from this evil Gizmo. All right. Working our way back down, we s again. Sir Astral runs like Doctor Robotnik, faster than expected. All right. So this soldier f fainted. Really? You f you fainted. Pride of the King's Army, you are. Anyway, let's just go this way. What's going on? I saw a devil enter the King's body, and the King became violent. That doesn't sound good. Let's see what's going on. And obviously, we get the suspenseful music because the King is now possessed. <laughs> He's possessed. He needs an exorcism right now. I need an old priest and a young priest. Which, uh, we, we have, actually. If you count Astral as the old priest, Sarah is a young priest. Because she's still... So yeah, we, we could do this. I must use a dangerous, a powerful spell. It may be dangerous, so stay back. Are you sure having the priest won't help? Like, really? We, we could... You, you have a priest here with you. But apparently Astral is a jack-of-all-trades, and Exorcist is one of his specialties. So he just shot the king with a fireball. <laughs> How to perform an exorcism? Kill them. <laughs> did it work? Yes, it did. Uh, remove the devil. So the evil gizmo has been uh, banished from the king's body. Are you alright? Let me use your soldiers. We must kill it before it finds another victim. And the king's like, I have no idea what's going on. But why am I here? And Sir Astral... Astral is exhausted. He won't wake up. The minister summons soldiers to the hall to kill the evil spirit. So this is our fighting force. We have knights in red or pink. I'm, I'm thinking that's pink, because Chester's got red on, on him. So that's pink. We've got soldiers in blue. And then we've got shirtless men in green pants and green bandanas. That is our military. It's hard to believe we are a kingdom, that we are recognized as a power, <laughs> when this is our, our, 
This is our military. It's like, and we're only gonna send one knight, two soldiers, and four shirtless men out to kill Adia. Well, I mean, granted, three children were able to kill six of the, uh, the, the spawned evil gizmos, so I guess maybe proportionately that, that makes sense. Yes, we're kind of curious about if, uh, Astro's alright, he just fainted, he was exhausted by the two battles. He didn't even fight in either battle. Well, he fought in the second one. But this is the best part. Don't worry about him. If he dies, it doesn't matter. He's old anyway. How dark is this for a... Oh my god. Oh, that is just... That's... I really hope that was just a really poor translation. Otherwise, that was just... That was just dark, for no discernible reason. So, we've sent off soldiers for subjugation. I love how they use that word to make it sound even more official. They, they could just say, We sent people out for the demon slaying. I'm too late. Astral came back to his senses just now. Yeah, what's going on? He feels an ill omen behind the opening and the gizmo. Well... It could be that the gizmo was living inside there, because the door was closed. Maybe it's... Um, maybe this tower is like the, uh, the containment unit from Ghostbusters. We just put a whole bunch of demons in there, and now it's open because Walter Peck decided to turn off the power grid. And that was a completely random and ridiculously uh, tangential related joke. Uh, anyway, so we're talking about we need to go speak to Howl of Yield. Uh, this is the, the minor relation to one of the other Shining games. There is a person named Howl in a previous game, but they get very little time in this. They, they, there's really very little of a connection other than kind of a convenient plot device. But other than the character's name, there's very little relation to the other game, which is why I always pick this one first to start, because this one will have a direct, a more direct connection to the next game. So, we're going to uh, take the King's request and go find Howl and uh, see what we can find out about uh, this tower and the evil gizmos. Alright, so we are going to... The town is now awake, everyone's hustling and bustling, so this gives us some options. If we go to try to leave, however, is when something happens. Here you are, I've been waiting for you. This is Yaha, or Jaha. I'm gonna be switching in between both pronunciation. Um, I apologize, I always called him Jaha, but my brother was like, I'm pretty sure it's Yaha, and I, it might be, so. Uh, this is our fourth classmate who overslept. Because he overslept, he missed the battle. And he's rather unhappy that that happened. I would've woken up early if I knew. So I came to meet you. You're going to Yule, right? Under the King's orders. Of course I'm going to. So Yaha the War has joined the force, and he is a dwarven warrior carrying an axe. He is going to be our tank for a little bit of the game. So now that he's here, we're going to do some things. Uh, first off, we are going to come over here. We can look around, and we can look and see, oh, there's people. Uh, these are beastmen. These are actual people that are just a different race. This, however, this is an adorable little turtle who's very hungry. Uh, but I just want to talk for a second about how dark it is that we are imprisoning, uh, you know, sentient people in a zoo. That's, that's a little dark. Alright, so if we come over here, we can come to the dock. This section was blocked off earlier. And we actually want something here. Uh, I don't remember which one of these it's in. Or if it's actually on the boat. I think it's on the boat. There is something here that we want. And... I don't, I don't remember where it is. I know it's in here. And there we go. The quick chicken. Uh, that is an item that we are going to be saving for... Actually, I'm, I'm going to be selling it, and then I'll be rebuying it later, like most other things. Which is the next thing that we're going to go deal with. 
uh, is the shop. We've got some items that we can uh, deal with. So, yeah. Let's go take care of those. Uh, not that we really need to, but it gives a little bit of a boost early in the game. So what we're going to do is we're going to sell some things. We're going to sell... Uh, we're going to sell Bowie's wooden sword. And we are going to sell Chester's wooden stick. We are also going to sell the mithril. Now... Wow, it's a rare bird. I'll pay 1,500 gold coins for it. Now, you may think, like, we just sold the wooden stick. We can't rebuy back the wooden stick. It, it doesn't come back. But uh, rare items like this and the quick chicken. Actually, I'm not going to sell the quick chicken. I'll keep that. That can just hang out for a while. Um, if you go to the deal section, it will show up under deal. So we, we sold it for 1,500 we could buy it back for 2000 so right now that is a massive waste of money. But by the time we can use the Mithril, 500 gold is really a drop in the bucket. But it does help out considerably at this stage in the game. So we want to uh, make sure we are taking care of that. Uh, we're going to buy a short sword. And that will bring Bowie's attack up to 12. And we're going to buy a short spear. And spears are fun because they are ranged. They are our first ranged weapon that we get. Uh, they can attack at more than anything, just the adjacent squares. So, uh, the quick chicken, what it does is I believe it increases uh, agility? Yes. Uh, it increases agility, which, uh, as you can see, everyone's agility is listed there under the AG stat 5, 6, 7, 4. Uh, so Yaha has the lowest, but you don't want to use any stat increasing item until after you promote the character, because when you promote the character, their, their stats are going to reset to their promoted class. Um, so you want to be careful with that. Uh, save every stat boosting item until after you promote. Um, because your stats do change when you promote, and most of those end up being reset, so, in some way. Alright, so we have the second fight. The fight on our way to you. We are attacked by... Oozes. HP of 9, attack of 11, defense of 6, agility of 5, movement of 4. And huge rats. HP of 10, attack of 12, defense of 8, agility of 7, movement of 6. There are several of these guys all over the place. So, like I said, we are going to do what we did last time, and we're just going to bait people along, is how we are going to handle this. Um, since I've already talked a little bit about it, I will uh, give a little more information on promoting. Uh, you can promote when you hit level 20 in this game, and your class is usually predetermined as to what you can promote to. Uh, Bowie will go from swordsman to hero, uh, that is always the case. Um, other classes, especially the classes, the characters that we have now, are some of the characters that are available to change to different classes depending on if we have a special item in our inventory. So there are uh, are some things to that that we want to keep it, uh, keep in mind. Uh, Chester, as a knight, can normally uh, miss a news completely with a spear. Uh, uh, promote to a paladin, or with a special item, promote to a pegasus knight. So there are many advantages to different classes, but uh, I'll get into that more when we actually get to uh, <clears throat> promotion range. And I'm going to heal Chester. Sarah, as level 2, is probably going to be spending a lot of time in the next couple of fights healing just to make sure she's uh, kept up to snuff. Yaha, it'll it'll take a little bit, but Yaha being such a tank that he is, won't take him long to catch up uh, in terms of uh, XP. Ooh! I almost lost Sarah right then and there. That was terrible. That's... That's just obnoxious heal Sarah. 
Thankfully, I have... I've got a multitude of healing items, so I'm not terribly worried. Alright. Let's heal Sarah so that she doesn't die. That would be, uh, not good this stage in the game. So, um... Yeah, we're... I don't really want to have Bowie attack and kill it, but I also don't want it to live. So, Bowie's level 3. Yaha's kinda hurting. But damage used by 7 and leveled up to 2 right off the bat. That's... That's kind of okay. Alright, let's, uh... Let's give that ooze someone to attack. Uh... I still I have a minute, so I'm gonna go ahead and do this. Uh, notice how there are different ranges. Uh, I, I talked about how the spear is a ranged weapon. There are we've already seen that you can counterattack, you can dodge, but you can only counterattack if that attack would work well. So, for example, Chester, you don't want to necessarily attack a melee character right next to them like this because that still gives them the option to counterattack. But if you attack a melee character at range. It prevents them from getting the counterattack option. So you can use that to your advantage to cut out uh, possible enemy counterattacks. Uh, the same thing goes for the uh, the inverse. You can use uh, uh, melee attacks against ranged characters that do not have an immediate melee response, and you can use that to. Uh, to uh, prevent uh, counterattacks uh, from those angles as well. So, things to keep in mind. Uh, and for now, I'm actually going to go ahead and end this episode because we are out of time. But uh, I will see you guys in the next installment where we finish this fight up and uh, head to you. So, uh, till then, later everyone.